Have I waited to say good morning? 16 weeks I have to wait to say good morning to the church family, and I'm excited. I was saying to Mr. McBetridge earlier this morning, I'm excited. I have butterflies in my stomach, but get back into the pulpit and seeing so many of the church family, and it is good that we're able to meet together again as a church family. Following are the intimations. As I've already said, it's great to see so many of our church family out today after the lockdown. And it's starting once again to lift. Please keep your social distance at all time as you move throughout the meeting house. And upon entering, I know we've already the signs up, but I'm just reinforcing them. Upon entering, please ensure that you use the wash provided before you go into the meeting house. Only two to a few, unless you're from the same uh, household. There will be no singing, and this is to help prevent spreading the virus. However, our organist will play a few verses of a psalm and a hymn during our worship this morning. Could I place on record on behalf of the congregation our thanks to our church organist, Mr. Burris, who came and provided music for our recording throughout the lockdown. He's very famous. It's even gone as far as Australia from the information I'm getting through uh, Facebook. Uh, so, Mr. Burris, your talents is going around the world. <laughs> you really are international. So, a small church in Larne, we are going around the world on Facebook and YouTube, and also to Ruben for recording over here, for Carl for recording the service. We do appreciate uh, your kindness. Also, could I thank Mr. Ruben Duris for painting and helping to paint our church railings uh, during the lockdown. I think we'd all agree that they are looking well. If you are aware of anyone in the hospital or anyone that would be asking for a visit, please fill in the card as and from tomorrow. The hospitals are opening up to allow ministers back in to visit, so uh, if you're aware of any of our church family, uh, not well, please take the opportunity and place it on the offering plate. Our offering plate is at the door as you leave. We are not collecting an offering uh, through our service that once again to help prevent the spread of uh, coronavirus, but uh, please take this opportunity. Could I thank all who kindly put their envelope in during the lockdown was greatly appreciated your kindness throughout the lockdown. Once again, could I remind you of social distancing? I know I seem to be hammering on about it, but we must keep our social distancing and there'll be no shaking of hands. I won't be going to the door, however, should you want to speak to me, I will be at the vestibule over to the right if there's anything that you would like to speak to me about. Now it's amazing how I get to hear about certain things. And certain people I believe are 40 tomorrow. Is that right, Kenneth? <laughs> uh, and I believe it's your birthday. Uh, well, it would be your birthday if you're 40 tomorrow. Uh, so I think it's only about right and proper. The church family's back together and we should sing happy birthday to Kenneth. <laughs> How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. Our organist will now play a few verses from Psalm 24. The earth belongs unto the Lord. Psalm 24. <laughs>
mighty God, we give you thanks and praise that the earth belongs unto the Lord and all that it contains. And so, Father, we come before you and almighty God, and we lift up our tongue in praise to you, our God and our King. We prayed for the day that the church family would be able to come together once again to worship you and to praise your holy and wonderful name. And we thank you, Lord, for those who put themselves on the front line, the NHS and all the emergency services to fight against this virus. And we think also, Lord, for those families who are grieving today passing of loved ones who lost their life to the virus. And we pray, Lord, they weren't able to say a proper goodbye and yet they're still grieving. Comfort such, we pray, Lord, and put your arms around them and support them and may they know the peace and the blessing of Almighty God. And for these few moments, Lord, as we gather once again as a church family, we give you thanks and we give you praise. And we say how great and how wonderful is our God. That we're able to hear again the word of God be read and preached upon in the house of God. So bless us now, Father, we pray. These prayers and all other prayers we sum up the words that Jesus himself taught us to say whenever we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Joe is now going to bring to us our Bible reading from Joshua, the chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. <clears throat> now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I have not commanded you to be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The other three. Thank you. Joe. 
It's an amazing thing whenever you read through the Bible. Whenever God gives a promise, makes a covenant. And one thing we read over and over again is that God keeps his word. And during the weeks of lockdown, I always say it, that God would see us through the troubles that we face and God kept his word. Slowly, the lockdown is beginning to lift. And today we meet as a church family once again. I was remarking to some people that it is strange to be in the pulpit. It's strange to be back and seeing so many faces looking at me rather than looking into a camera. And yes, as we look back over the past number of weeks, things were different. Strange times, unprecedented times. Schools closing, shops closing, businesses closed, forced to close, churches closed. Thank God the word of God was still preached in this place. And I do thank those who made that possible, Carl and Ruben and John. The word of God was read and preached upon. And the verses that we read together this morning, we heard no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. This verse tells of the encouraging promise God made to Joshua. After the death of the great leader, Moses, the man whom God called at the burning bush to go and lead his people out of the land of bondage, and for 40 years he led the children of Israel around the wilderness. And now the great man of God, the great prophet, the lawgiver, the one who brought the law down Mount Sinai, he's dead. And the people are standing. They look at Joshua, the son of Nun, and God promised him that he would lead his people into that promised land. And this promise is no less true for God's people today who have been rescued from sin and are no longer subjected to Satan and his powers. So the hymn writer put it this way. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my life. I have light in my soul for which I have sought. Since Jesus came into my heart. Joshua, the new leader, told the people of Israel, no one, no thing, will be able to stand against you and as long as you live, nothing. Will destroy the promise and the covenant that God made. What hope they had on the banks of the River Jordan. Well, they had wandered for 40 years around the wilderness and God provided for them. 
Whatever they cried to Moses, all we should have said in Egypt. At least we have food, we have water, we may have been slaves, we may have been beaten. They forgot that God had made a promise. And like so many people, as they stood on the bank of the river Jordan, to go into that promised land. The coronavirus came. And yes, it hit our nation. And we went into lockdown. Now, thank God it's left. And the house of God. This building, this congregation that for four centuries meets again. And I say to you today, the promise that God gave to Joshua all those years ago, I will not leave you nor forsake you. And those who walk with God can truly shout, the Lord the Lord is on my side. And throughout the weeks of lockdown, I knew this day would come. I knew the light would be there eventually at the end of the tunnel. 17 years ago, I came to this congregation. The first sermon I preached as your minister was on the verse in Joshua chapter 1. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall inherit the land that I swore their fathers. And I remember saying at the time, all we have to do is believe. For almost 400 years, our forefathers held on to that promise. The coronavirus can't shake or destroy or dim the promise God made. As Joshua told the people to get ready, it's all most time for the promised land. Not just any land, but the land of milk and honey. The land that was flowing with food. And what a promise we have as a church family. There is great days ahead. Why did I say that? Because my hope is founded in Christ alone. He's my rock. My salvation. And the house that's built upon the rock, Christ Jesus, can face any storm in life. So let us leave this place sure that we trust in him and in him alone for he is our strength, he is our hope, he is our salvation. No man, no thing shall be able to stand before us all the days her life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So let us remember that we are a great people. We have come through a lot. And God has blessed us. And let us
let us never forget that our God is still on the throne and he remembers his own. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise that as you were with Moses, so you were with Joshua, so you are with every child of God that have put their hand into your hand and have trusted in your salvation. We've asked for forgiveness of sin. Help us, Lord, to remember and count our many blessings as we look over the weeks of lockdown. How that you kept us safe. But Father, we think, as we've already said, of those who have lost loved ones. And there's an emptiness and a void and an aching heart. For all who still suffer with coronavirus or the side effects of it, put your healing hand upon them, Father. And we give you thanks for the heroes in the national health, the police, the ambulance service, the fire service, all those on the front line who made a difference. We think also, Lord, of our schools as they try to put together a program for starting back in September or August. We pray for all our schools, Lord, and those around this congregation, the grammar, the high school, the boy, and all the primary schools, Father. That you would bless the principals, bless the Board of Governors as they try to come to terms with what to do. As regulations change, Lord, so quickly. And as they plan. Guide such, Father, we pray. We think of those in authority over us, Father that they would be role models for all to look up to. That we would listen to what we've been told to try to help prevent the spread of this virus. Bless all who serve in Her Majesty's Armed Forces. Bless those young men and women and keep them safe. Continue now, Father, to tarry with us. And bless us for we ask it and pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our organist will now play a few verses from hymn 568, Lead Kindly Life.
Father, the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep you and your family this day and forevermore.